Hello everyone and welcome to an intro to signal analysis video. Today's topic is on solving equations of the form z to the n minus c is equal to zero. So let's get started. So our goal is to solve equations of this form, which we can write as z to the n is equal to c, where c in general is some complex number. The easiest example we have from algebra is the equation z squared is equal to one. And so we can ask ourselves, well, how many solutions are there? And you probably remember that from algebra. There are two solutions, and those solutions are z is equal to plus 1, and the other solution is z is equal to minus 1. So that's pretty straightforward, um, and you probably remember that solution from previous classes. But we'll see that we can actually use some of the complex arithmetic we've been learning to solve this, and that will help us to solve more complicated equations. So we start first by rewriting this equation. We start with z squared is equal to 1, but we can write 1 as equal to 1 e to the j 2 pi k, where k is equal to an integer. Now, why is this true? Well, we know that if we go around the unit circle, if we have our unit circle here, it's the real part and the imaginary part, and here's our unit circle, this is 1. If I go around by 2 pi, I'm back at the same point that I started. So, so e to the j 2 pi is also equal to 1, as is e to the j 4 pi, etc. Now maybe it seems like we've complicated our equation by um, adding the e to the j 2 pi k term, but we'll see that it helps us automatically get those two solutions that we're looking for. So to proceed further to solve this equation, we just raise each side of the equation to the 1 half power. So z squared to the 1 half and 1 e to the j 2 pi k raised to the 1 half. Well, z squared to the 1 half is just z, so that's what we're looking for. Um, and then we end up on the right-hand side with 1 to the 1 half, and e to the j 2 pi k over 2. All right, well, 1 to the 1 half, that's our radius, and that's just going to be equal to 1. And then we're going to be left with e to the j 2 pi over 2 cancels, so we get e to the j pi k, where again, k is an integer. So let's see if we can sketch out the solutions that we get. So if k is equal to 0, we get the solution z is equal to 1 e to the j 0, which easily reduces to just 1. We can plot our solutions over here on a, in the complex plane. So I'll draw my unit circle, and 1 is right here. And then if k is equal to 1, we get z is equal to um, 1 e to the j pi. Well, 1 e to the j pi is on the radius of a circle of radius 1, but it's located pi radians. So it's located pi radians around here um, from, from the starting point here. And so it's located right here, and that's minus 1 e to the j pi is minus 1. If we plug in k is equal to 2, we get z is equal to 1 e to the j 2 pi, which again, we're going around by 2 pi, means we're back here. So that's 1. So there are really only, we said that there should be two solutions, right? We expect two solutions, two unique solutions. expect two unique solutions, and that's exactly what we got out of this. So we complicated the equation, or it seemed it, we made this equation a little more complicated, but we got the two solutions that we wanted. Now, if this was the simple equation we were aiming to solve, we probably didn't need to go through all of this. But for slightly more complex equations, we are going to need to do this, and this was a good example to get started on. So let's consider a different example. So let's consider this case. So now it's a little more complicated. We're going to look at z cubed. z cubed is equal to 27. 
So the first thing we ask ourselves is how many solutions do we expect? Well, if it's a third order polynomial, because we have the z cubed, then we should expect three solutions, so three unique solutions. And we're going to solve this problem the same way we solved the example on the previous slide. Um, we're first going to rewrite our equation. So we rewrite and we say z cubed is equal to 27. We're just going to multiply by e to the j 2 pi k, where k again is an integer. So remember, I haven't, doing this multiplication by e to the j 2 pi k, I have not changed the equation because e to the j 2 pi k is just 1. So I've multiplied the right hand side by 1. But doing this enables me to actually solve the equation. So now I proceed and I just take the third root of both sides. So I'm raising both sides to the third power. So it would be 27 e to the j 2 pi k to the 1 third. And so I get end up with z on the left side. z cubed to the 1 third is just z. Then I get 27 to the 1 third. And I get e to the j 2 pi k over 3. Well, what is 27 to the 1 third? Well, that's just 3. So my final answer is 3 e to the j 2 pi k over 3, where again k is an integer. We expect three solutions, right? We said we expected three solutions, so we should try and plot those out in the complex plane. So let me draw my complex plane here, imaginary versus real. And then what's my first solution? It's when k is equal to 0. So the first solution will be z is equal to 3 e to the j 0, which is just 3. So 3 is somewhere over here, right? It's a purely real number. If I plug in for k is equal to 1, I get z is equal to 3 e to the j 2 pi times 1 over 3. So I get 3 e to the j 2 pi over 3. So that should be on, on the circle of radius 3, but now it's going to be around an angle by 2 pi over 3, which is somewhere over here in the second quadrant. So I will get that number. And whoops, that doesn't quite look right. Um, let me draw my circle of radius 3. That might help me out. So here's my circle of radius 3. Here's where 2 pi over 3 is approximately. So that is 3 e to the j 2 pi over 3 is right there. And then finally, k equal 2, I get z e to the, sorry, 3 e to the j 2 pi times 2 over 3, or e to the j 4 pi over 3, which is in here in the third quadrant, 3 e to the j 4 pi over 3. Now I could plug in one more number, right? And I could plug in and I would get 3 e to the j 2 pi 3 over 3, but that'll just be 3 e to the j 2 pi, which will be 3 again. So I'll have come all the way back around. Um, so there, we were only expecting three unique solutions, and we've got our three unique solutions, and they're plotted in the complex plane. Okay, so we've seen two examples. Let's try a third. So at this point, I'm going to strongly encourage you to pause the video and try and solve this problem on your own before you look at my solution of it. Okay, hopefully you've paused it and done your own solution, and so now we can work through the solution together. All right, so we're looking to solve z cubed is equal e to the minus j pi over 4. We ask ourselves first, well, how many solutions do we expect? Well, it's a third root, third power polynomial, third order, so we expect three, three unique solutions. Okay, so we're going to proceed to solve this just like we did before. I'm going to write z cubed is equal to e to the minus j pi over 4. And again, I'm just going to multiply by e to the j 2 pi k, where k is an integer. And remember, 
I'm not changing the right-hand side of this equation because e to the j2 pi k is just simply equal to 1. So I've multiplied by 1, which is a perfectly valid thing to do. Now I take the root of both sides, so z cubed to the 1 third is equal to e to the minus j pi over 4 e to the j 2 pi k to the 1 third. And I can just bring the 1 third power in to both of those and I end up with e to the minus j pi over 12 times e to the j 2 pi over 3. Okay, so that's what z is going to be equal to. So let's plug in and see if we can find our three solutions. So if k is equal to 0, I'm just left with e to the minus j pi over 12 times e to the j 0. Whoops, I left off a k there. So the first solution is e to the minus j pi over 12. So we can figure out where that is in the complex plane. And it's got, remember this is a, a magnitude of 1, so it'll be on the unit circle. And it's um, got a phase angle of minus pi over 12, which will be right down here somewhere in the fourth quadrant, right? That'll be e to the minus j pi over 12. What about k is equal to 1? Well, we'll be left with 1 e to the minus j pi over 12 times e to the j 2 pi over 3, which we could rewrite this, right? e to the minus j pi over 12 plus this will be 8 pi over 12, right? So it'll be e to the plus j uh, 7 pi over 12, right? Um, so where is that going to be? Um, so basically, I'm just going around here by a factor of 2 pi over 3, by a phase angle of 2 pi over 3, which is going to put me somewhere over there. So this will be e to the j 7 pi over 12. Okay, um, so now um, we just have one more to solve for. It's k equal 2. And this will end up being 1 e to the minus j pi over 12 times e to the j um, 4 pi over 3, right? Um, so 4 pi over 3, and just multiply top and bottom by 4, I get uh, 16 pi over 12. Um, so this will be e to the j 15 pi over 12. Whoops. Made a little error there. 15 pi over 12, which again is just going to be 2 pi over 3 around uh, from here. Um, so that'll put me somewhere approximately there. This is a very rough sketch, but that's e to the j 15 pi over 12. Okay, so we have our three solutions. They're distributed equally in angle uh, around the unit circle, and they start off at e to the minus j 5 pi over 12. Whoops, forgot the 12 there. Um, and they go around, uh, around from there. So, um, so you've seen three examples now of solving equations of the form z to the n is e. So in summary, if we try to solve equations of this form, we expect n solutions. All of those solutions are going to be on a circle of radius c to the 1 over n, because we're taking the nth root. And they'll be distributed in angle um, every 2 pi over n. So if we had that, basically I've sketched n equal to 4 here. right? Here's a circle of radius c to the 1, n, 1 over n. And then the solutions will be equally distributed in angle, um, separated by 2 pi over n. So, and the starting point for these will depend on what the actual value of c is equal to.
Okay, so that concludes our video for today. This video was made for the ECE 201 course at George Mason University. If you want more information about Mason or the Volterno School of Engineering or the ECE department or me, you can find that on these websites. Thanks for listening.